Hello, I'm Neil Alexander, the Activities Director here at LCHS. You are viewing this mandatory 15-minute video as part of the registration process for your child to participate in one or more sports or activities this school year. It is very important that you and your student or students are aware of and understand the rules and guidelines of the LCHS Extracurricular Handbook. During this video, I will highlight the rules and expectations related to sports and activities participation that you will need to know. Be sure to read the extracurricular handbook for more details. You can view and print the handbook at our sports and activities website www.athletics2000.com slash Lincoln. At the conclusion of this video, you will be redirected to the registration page so you can complete your child's registration. If you have any questions about the registration process or your child's participation, please contact the Activities Office at 217-732-4131, extension 1270. When students have to miss school for medical appointments, we ask that the parent or student contact Mr. or Mrs. Alexander in advance to inform us of your plans. We will need a note from the doctor when the student returns to school so we can document the student's absence for our records and before they are cleared for participation. Unexcused absences from school for the entire day or for a part of the day means that a student can't participate in any game, contest, or performance that afternoon or evening. Unexcused absences could include oversleeping, missing the bus, or just skipping school. Keep in mind, tardies and illnesses are not considered excused or prearranged absences. Please note that practices and weekend events are exempted from the attendance policy. Weekly Eligibility Guidelines We follow IHSA rules when it comes to checking our students' grades for weekly eligibility. Students must pass a minimum of five classes each week. The only classes that don't count towards eligibility are driver's education and our Lincolnite yearbook class. When we check grades, we use a cumulative grade a student has earned since the first day of that semester. At the beginning of each semester, we give students a two to three week grace period to accumulate several grades in their classes because we realize that early in a semester, sometimes one or two low grades can put a student at risk of being ineligible. We run our weekly eligibility report every Friday and the reports include all the grades a student has earned through the end of the day on Thursday. We actually run two reports. A warning list which is a list of students who are earning at least one D and are at risk of being ineligible if their grades get worse. We also run a ineligible list which is a list of students who are ineligible for the following week because they did not pass five classes. We share these reports with coaches and sponsors whose team or groups are participating at that time of the year. Our coaches and sponsors inform the students who are on the warning list or the ineligible list about their status for the following week. The period of ineligibility runs the following Monday through Sunday after the report has been ran on Friday. Ineligible students cannot dress for or participate in any contest during that week. Students who are ineligible for the week should go to practice and can attend the contest as long as they don't have to leave school early for an away event. Semester Eligibility Guidelines Students must pass at least five classes from the previous semester, and they must earn at least a 1.5 grade point average from the previous semester. A 1.5 GPA falls right between a D plus and a C minus average. Students who do not meet both of these academic requirements are ineligible for the entire following semester. Students who are ineligible for the semester may still participate with one of our teams as a practice player as long as they complete the registration process. However, they will not be issued a team uniform, will not be listed on a team roster, will not appear in a team photo, cannot participate in any contest, and may not be dismissed from school early to travel to competition with the team. Extracurricular Code Violations Next, I want to talk about behavior. 
but before I explain our extracurricular code and consequences for illegal activities, I want to be sure parents and students understand that our code is in effect year-round. Students need to avoid the temptation of illegal activities both during the school year and in the summer. Participation in sports and activities is a privilege and not a right. We hold students who are involved in sports and activities to a higher standard and behavior than those who aren't involved. They are representatives of LCHS. When students participate in sports and activities at LCHS, they agree to follow our rules regarding code violations during their entire four-year career. Code violations. Code violations could include, but not limited to, the following actions. Commit a serious act, which may not necessarily be illegal, but is detrimental to the individual, the coach, the team, or the school. Possess or use tobacco, alcohol, illegal drugs, or drug paraphernalia. Possess or use prescription drugs in a non-prescribed manner. Possess or use illegal drugs that enhance or alter performances. Commit or assist with a misdemeanor crime or felony as defined by the Illinois criminal law. Students do not have to be convicted of a crime in order to be subject to disciplinary actions. If a student commits his or her first code violation, the student is suspended from activities and sports for 25% of the current and or next season. Additionally, the student must meet with an LCHS guidance counselor to discuss the violation and to determine whether or not there is a need for further counseling. There is no option to reduce the suspension for a first-time code violation. If a student commits a second code violation during his or her time at LCHS, the student is suspended for one full season of the current and or next activity or sport. If the student successfully completes a counseling program from a non-LCHS counselor, the consequences may be reduced to 50% of the season. If a student commits a third code violation, the student is suspended from activities and sports for one calendar year. The student is also required to complete a counseling program from a non-LCHS counselor. If the student does not agree to complete a counseling program after the third code violation, the student will be suspended for the remainder of his or her high school career. There is no opportunity to reduce a suspension on the third violation. If a student commits a fourth code violation, the student is suspended from activities and sports for the remainder of his or her high school career. There is no opportunity to reduce a suspension on the fourth violation. Please note that a student who commits a felony will be suspended for a minimum of one calendar year. If a student is in more than one sport or activity at the time the violation was committed, a suspension must be served in each one. Chain of Command. Our Chain of Command exists to remind students and parents how to proceed in the event that they have an issue or situation they need to discuss with an adult at school. Issues could be about team dynamics, something that took place during a practice or a game, or general questions about your son or daughter's role on the team. Coaches will not discuss playing time or talk with you about other students on the team. If your son or daughter needs to talk about an issue related to the team, parents should encourage your child to talk with the coach first. If the student and the coach can come to an agreement about the situation, that's great. Parents didn't have to get involved, and the student learned some things about handling adversity. However, if your child and the coach aren't able to reach an agreement that you think works for your child, parents have every right to contact the coach to discuss the situation. Parents can contact the coach by phone or email and should set up a meeting that happens away from practice or game time. Coaches will likely request the student's presence at the meeting so all involved can be part of a solution. After meeting with the coach, students and parents who need more clarity or have further questions about the situation are welcome to contact the activities director for assistance. Our main point is that we want students and coaches to work together to attempt to reach an agreement prior to taking issues further along in the chain of command. Transportation. LCHS provides transportation for all our sports and activities away events.
Students must ride to and from all events in a school bus or school vehicle. Students with driver's license are not allowed to drive themselves. In some unusual cases, parents may be allowed to transport their child to or from an event. If you need to make special transportation arrangements, you must communicate with the coach or sponsors at least one day in advance. We leave the decision up to the coaches and sponsors. However, students will only be dismissed to their own parents or guardians. Students will not be dismissed to another relative or a friend's parents. All incoming freshmen must have a physical to enter high school. During a student's freshman year, the school physical doubles as a sports physical. Freshmen do not need to get a separate physical in order to play sports. Students who play sports as an upperclassman need a new physical each year. Students who participate in non-athletic activities like band, scholastic ball, drama, FFA, or the speech team do not need a physical after their freshman year. Physicals are valid for 395 days. The reason physicals are valid for one year plus one month is that most insurance companies cover a physical once every 365 days. Therefore, a student whose physical expires during the school year will not have to set out a few days between the expiration date and the date parents can schedule a new physical because of insurance requirements. Now you have an extra 30 days to update your child's physical. At the end of the registration process, the only paper document we need from you is a copy of your child's most recent physical. We partner with Abraham Lincoln Memorial Hospital to provide athletic training services to all our athletes. The services are free to all families. Our trainer is at school every day for practices and games and will treat athletes for injuries that range from minor bumps and bruises to major injuries like knee, ligaments, and concussions. In the event a student sustains an injury, the student needs to see the trainer immediately and cooperate with the trainer's suggestions for recovery. All athletes will take the impact concussion baseline test prior to participating in sports. The baseline test is valid for two years, so most students who play sports all four years of high school will take the test during their freshman and junior years. It is a computer-based test that gives our trainer and doctors an indication of what normal brain functioning looks like for each individual student. As an IHSA member school, we will follow the IHSA's return to play protocol when it comes to handling students who suffer concussion symptoms. Students who exhibit concussion symptoms may be removed from practice or games by a coach, our athletic trainer, or a contest official. When a student is removed from a practice or a game, he or she can only return to practice or play that day with the approval of our athletic trainer or a school-approved doctor. Students who do not return to play on the day of the injury can only return to practice and or play on future days after being cleared by our athletic trainer or doctor. As part of the return to play protocol, all athletes who suffer from concussion symptoms will take a follow-up impact test to help us determine if he or she is ready to return to participation in practices and games. Please keep in mind that because all concussions are different, some athletes may have to follow a gradual return timeline, while others might be able to return at full strength just after a few days. For more information on what parents need to know about concussion signs and symptoms in their child, along with more details on the IHSA Return to Play Protocol, visit the IHSA website at www.ihsa.org. The IHSA has a program in place to test athletes for performance-enhancing drugs, better known as steroids. All athletes are eligible for random testing at any time during the season. If chosen, athletes submit a urine sample that is tested at an independent laboratory. The likelihood of your child being tested during his or her career is very remote, but I want you to know that this testing program exists. Athletes and parents consent to testing as part of this online registration process. You likely access this registration site through our sports and activities site 
www.athletics2000.com slash Lincoln. You can visit this site at any time for the most up-to-date schedules, photos, and other important information that relates to your child's sport or activity. When the weather or some other situation forces us to change schedules, we will contact parents to inform them of the changes. Texting seems to work the best. On days when the weather might be an issue, we will do everything we can to conduct our events as originally scheduled. However, there will be times when we all have to be flexible. We will only contact parents if we have postponed or canceled the event. If you don't hear from us, you can know that the event is on as scheduled. If you have questions about whether or not an event has been canceled or postponed or where the location of a certain away event will be held, please contact the AD office at 217-732-4131, extension 1270. We want all students to have a positive and memorable experience as a Lincoln Railer. Students who participate in sports and activities have better attendance, better grades, and better behavior qualities than those that do not. Our office wants to be a resource you can count on to help guide your child through high school, so please contact us with any questions or concerns you or your student may have while attending LCHS. Please remember to complete all parts of the registration process before submitting it. If your child is playing a sport, we need a copy of his or hers most recent physical exam in our office prior to any tryouts and the first day of practice. Here are some helpful registration hints. Check both parent and student boxes of each form if required. The process will not complete without both boxes being checked. You will receive an email stating that you have successfully registered if your registration was completed properly. Blank physical forms will not download from the registration site. Use the form from the doctor. Here is an important thing to keep in mind. The same email and password you submitted to begin the registration process is the one you will need to register your student or students for all sports and activities during their high school career. Keeping this information in a safe place will make your future registration process easier by saving all vital information that you entered. That concludes the video portion of our registration process. Good luck to all teams and participants.